This case management conference hearing is in the matter of case number CFI 052-2021 before the Registrar Noor Hinedi and is being held by way of video conference. Any orders or directions made during or after the course of this hearing will be issued by the registry in Dubai on the registrar's instructions. The claimant is represented by Khalifa bin Huaydan al Kitbi Advocates and Legal Consultants. Lead, lead counsel is PV, PV Danish. The defendants are represented by DWF Middle East LLP. Lead counsels are James Fox and Emma Walker. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Janesh and Mr. Fox, I've taken a look at the documents that have been uploaded onto the CMS and I can't see anything besides a case management sheet, case management information sheet. Is that right? Yeah, case man management information sheet as well as index along with the in index. Okay. The index. I can't see any index. What's the index for, Mr. Janesh? Uh, index about the uh, the statement of case, case memorandum, list of issues, and draft case management order and case management information sheet. That's strange. One second, yeah. please. Yeah. Uh, it's about 300 page document. I can't see the index. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Is there any separate file because uh, the any separate file as this index? It's not on the e on any e bundle, um, and all I can see is the case management information sheet. So, unfortunately, my preparation for this hearing was um, quite limited. Um, could you please you just tell me please, whether? Could you please look at the first page of the case bundle? Uh, I think the first page may appear as blank. It just that is what I also got the information. It in fact starts from page number two. I don't have a bundle. Oh, I'm so sorry. In fact, uh, I'm slightly handicapped. The briefing council's mother passed away yesterday night, so she left. Okay. Registrar, uh, if I can, if I might be able to help. Um, yes, Mr. Fox. We, we were able to to get a bundle. Um, we were able to download one. Would it be helpful if we send you that by PDF? Yes, please. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. We'll do we'll do that straight away. It'll be a it'll be a download link because I think it's it's too big to send just as a as a pure email. But you'll have that in the next couple of minutes. Fantastic, thank you. Um, in the meantime, if if you can just brief me on whether um, there's anything in dispute between the parties in respect of uh, the procedure, the upcoming procedure of the case. Oh. I believe I'm appearing for the claimant, and uh, uh, I believe that there is no much of issues except uh, a dispute on list of issues, that settlement of issues. Okay. So that's the issues so far as statement of case, case memorandum, and draft case management order and case management information sheet. There is no disagreement, but uh, there are certain disagreements so far as settlement of issues are concerned. Okay, so that's that's one thing we've we've got to figure I out hope today. I hope my uh, Leonard friend would agree to that. As in, as in the, the, the only outstanding thing to discuss today is the list yes. of issues. Mr. Fox? Yes, um, that, that's my understanding. Unless there is, um, we're content with the form of order that has been filed in the bundle. So unless the, the claimants have filed it, so unless they are unhappy with the, the, the order that they filed, we're, we're, we're content with it. Okay. Um, there, there is one other matter I'd just like to very quickly address, Registrar, if that would be okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm joined by uh, my colleague, Miss Emma Walker. Um, I should flag that uh, Miss Walker is, is neither part one or part two registered. My understanding of the rules are that for a CMC, it is not required. And actually the requirement is that the party that should be representing should be the most familiar with the case. Ms. Walker is one of the most familiar with the, with, with the case as well as myself. Um, so I wanted to, to address that as, a, as, a, as an issue to you at the very beginning so you were aware. And if you had any objections, obviously Ms. Ms. Walker won't speak. Um, no, that's fine. But is there a reason why she's not registered as part one? Um, because she is an employed barrister by DWF. She is not employed by DRF Middle East LLP, which is our okay. Dubai entity. Okay. Um, look, if, 
in theory, I've got no issue with it, but um, she should ought to get her, you know, she ought to get herself registered as part one or part two. Um, and ultimately it's up to her whether she wishes to take a part one registration and assign herself to DWF or otherwise um, do a solo registration under part two. It's entirely up to her, but she really should be registered under um, one part or the other. So in theory, um, you're right in that uh, the person who speaks at the CMC doesn't really need to be registered, um, but in practice, they always are. Yeah, um, understood. Yeah, so I've, I've got no issues, obviously, with Miss Walker speaking today. Um, she's the most familiar person, as you, as you said, um, with the case. Um, but if she can just try and uh, get a registration together between now and the end of the year, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Registrar. Okay, so Mr. Janesh, given yeah. that you're acting for the claimant, would you like to just start me off? Obviously, I haven't had the luxury of, of reading through any documents. Sure. And that yes. was my bad. I had assumed that uh, these documents, because they weren't filed on the CMS, that they were not filed within a bundle. So I should have really uh, looked at this further before we progress to a hearing today. But it's going to take me probably the same amount of time to start reading into the documents that Mr. Fox has very kindly sent through. So would you just like to give me a synopsis of um, what the matter is about and yes. why the parties might not be seeing eye to eye, eye, to eye on the list of issues? Yes. Uh, it's a simple and straight claim of a recovery. Okay. And uh, a direct, racing out of a direct breach of contract. So I represent the claimant, and claimant is a basically a meat uh, uh, in the industry of meat processing, poultry processing, and fish processing unit. They source, process, and ship as per the purchase orders. So here there was a purchase, there was a series of purchase orders with the defendant, and defendant placed purchase orders, and as per the direction, we ship the items to Mali. And uh, we raised the invoices. As per the invoices, they are supposed to, I'm not getting into the quantum of the amount, which is, may not be that relevant. Uh, uh, we raised the invoices, and as per the invoices, they are supposed to make the payment within 90 days. But they did not make the payment. Uh, in fact, within that 90 days, within that six, I'm so sorry, 60 days, and they made the payment, that too only very one fourth of the uh, total claim. Uh, only after nine months, only after much persuasion. So that's our case. And uh, the dispute is, in fact, according to the defendant, we did not ship the product as they directed. Of course, there is no dispute so far as delivery of items are concerned. There was an inspection at Fujera uh, municipality and also inspection at the delivery point. And delivery as per the purchase order or the terms of the contract is as good as delivering the goods at the port and subject to inspection of the uh, customer of the, uh, the, the defendant. So it was inspected at both counts, at both places, at the origin, port of origin, as well as port of delivery. And uh, uh, there is no dispute. Thereafter, the dispute arose saying that we have not shipped the product as they specified. So that's a dispute. And essentially, this consentment is for UN peacekeeping forces consumption. So according to them, this is not as per the UN peacekeeping forces uh, consumption standard. And the delivery, uh, there are, uh, we did not follow the proper delivery process. That's what I hope that, subject to correction from my uh, uh, Miss uh, Emma Walker. Uh, this is the claim, and they paid the outstanding amount is uh, one uh, uh, one million twenty one thousand eight hundred seventeen uh, dirhams, and uh, they made the part payment, and part payment is about thirty thousand seven hundred twenty nine. So, so the, the the outstanding due according to us is one million two thousand one million. Uh, 21,817 is the outstanding amount of it. Okay, is, is there a counterclaim or no counterclaim? Of course, there is a counterclaim and all those steps are taken. We have responded to the counterclaim and they also have responded. So, so far as pleadings are complete 
at the pre-trial stage. Okay, good. Mr. Fox, is that, is there anything you want to add or take away from that? Yeah, I think there there is there is what there is probably one point that's worth worth, worth raising um, as a as a broad overview. We're, we're generally quite comfortable with, with that as a statement. I think that um, it's worth raising because um, you will well when you have an opportunity, you'll see that we've um, requested the right to adduce expert evidence um, because on the defendant's case, the goods that were delivered were not the goods that should have been delivered and there has been a expert with competence in biological genetic and quality testing of food who has um already made a declaration that the, the, the goods were not in compliance good and mr janesh did you want to um adduce your own expert evidence as well in response uh, uh, at this stage, I don't see because it's basically the documentary evidence which would satisfy us because the question is whether we deliver the goods or not. And there is no dispute so far as delivery is concerned. Uh, and according to the defendant, they tested it outside and we made the payment as well. And even according to defendant, they placed orders uh, from third party to satisfy the orders of uh, the ultimate customer. So I think more or less everything is based on documents, and I don't think that a witness is necessary in this case, subject to correction. Okay, you're saying that there's no witness necessary for your case, um, but are you raising an objection with Mr. Fox's proposition uh, that the uh, defendant and claimant to the counterclaim bring in its expert evidence? Are you raising uh, an objection to that particular question? Can I interfere for a moment? Uh, yes, can I, of course. Can I, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, that would definitely depend so on the documents which they may produce eventually. Subsequently, if they are going to produce certain documents, in that case, we might be recurring a rebuttal. Uh, for the time being, from the documents available or the documents produced or which has been given to us, uh, I don't see any scope for it. But during the process of further discovery, it may happen. That's what I'm not in a position to give a very conclusive answer to that for the time being. Right, but, but the issue that I'm having is we've got to project ahead and we've got to take into account whether expert evidence will be exchanged between the parties. So um, if you have an objection, then you ought to raise it now. And if you don't have an objection, then um, I'm going to allow it right away off the cuff. Um, but I am inclined to allow it in any event um, on the basis that the claimant to the counterclaim slash defendant to your claim um, should have a right to a fair trial. Um, and they could be very much stripped of that right in the event that they're not allowed to adduce expert evidence. Um, so unless you've got any I'm, I'm, objections. I'm obliged, uh, I'm obliged for that. Uh, in fact, I'm also quite new to the DIFC proceedings and uh, of course. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Janesh. So um, in terms of the list of issues, if we, if we st cut straight to that, um, Mr. Fox, um, would you be able to just tell me what the issue is that the parties don't see eye to eye on? Um, yes, of course. Thank you. Um, so there is, um, when you have an opportunity to look at the uh, look at the, the the bundle there is there's the case memorandum which has got both parties um uh, list of issues there is only two issues that are unagreed and I, if i it might be easiest if i take those you to those directly um they are both on the defendant's list of issues i unfortunately only have the the case lines bundle reference so i on my reference it's um 03-3. Um, I don't know if anyone who has got the PDF is able to give me the the PDF reference to, to help to help you with that. It is registrar and um, I do have the PDF bundle. Um, it, the 03-3, if you were to use the PDF, is, is page 283. 283. Thank you so much, Miss Walker. Um, I'm just going to download the PDF link. If you just bear with me for two minutes while I do that. Thank you very much.
wondering if Court Clark has access to the e-bundle, um, because if she does, then she may be able to just walk me through it in my office. It's taking some time to download. I don't think we're too far off. Yeah, it's running page 283. Yes. Dependence issues. So hopefully, it's looking like the download is almost complete. Okay. Um, whilst we're waiting for that, um, it might be helpful if we tee up the PDF references to um, 1169. If somebody could assist me with that in my team. Um, 1219, 1 and 1260. That will just save us some time. I can, I'll take you to the PDF page rather than the, I only unfortunately have the, the, the bundle reference. Very strange because the registry can't see the bundle either. I'm, I'm wondering what the issue is and it's still downloading from my end. Um, Ms. al Ghadib, would you mind popping in, please, so we can have access to the bundle and we can work off it together? Yes. Thank you. Success, I have it, finally. Um, all right, so 283, we said. Okay, so the issue that I'm having is I've got the PDF open, which is fantastic, but the problem is when I put the page number at the top of the PDF, it doesn't actually take me to the page number, So that which means I've got to scroll through the documents to try and... I think towards the end of it, it may be maybe around 300 pages, so you can... Uh, 20 pages, 25 pages minus. Out of the total documents, or 18, towards that end with all other documents. Running pages I'm talking about. Let's have a look. Registrar, if it may assist, um, at page 277 of the PDF, that is the beginning of all of the documents that we'll be addressing in relation to the list of issues. It starts with the case memorandum. Okay, very good. That and then you just stay at the back end as your main focus, and then we can refer you back to the individual pages of the pleadings which relate to the list of issues. Um, but we can do that in so stages, but the, the back end of the documents is really where we'll be addressing the, uh, the issues. That's very helpful. Thank you, Ms. Walker. So I've got the case management information sheets at the very back, which is obviously not what we're after because we want the case memorandum. And I've got the draft order there, list of issues, good. And it's the defendant's list of issues, which starts at the red number 03-3. 03-3, okay. 
it should be PDF. Limited. Perfect. I have it. Okay. That took so, a long time, but we're there. Thank you. There's only two issues that are not agreed. They are they both arise on the defendant's list of issues. Um, it's it's disputed issue number five and disputed issue number eight. So the first one is whether the claimant was the packer of the products. And if you if you'll forget what I think I might do is I might deal with both of the disputed issues now because it will be easier to take because I'll take you to the cross references in the bundle. But because those are earlier on in the bundle, it might be easiest if I just highlight the two issues now it will save having to jump. I'm just trying to avoid having to jump through the bundle so much in, in, in the circumstances. So apologies for doing this slightly out of order. No, that's so, fine. I think I think that's the easiest way to go about it. So so the two issues are um, whether the claimant was the packer of the products, um, which, as you can see, is marked as not agreed by the claimant. And the second issue that's in dispute is whether the rejected products needs to be returned to the claimant given they were specifically marked for UN consumption only and not for commercial use in accordance with the UN STD specifications and UN procurement rules. So those two issues have been opposed by the claimants. Um, the reason why the defendants say that they are issues is because they are both pleaded points in the case where defendants have raised them and uh, claimants have, 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 have opposed them in their pleadings, and I will take you to those references. Um, I managed to, while we were waiting, I've managed to pull up the PDF references. So it should be the first reference, which is it, it, to do with the first issue, which is whether the payment was back of the products, is arises in the um, defense and counterclaim. It's page 172 of the PDF bundle, or 1169 of the uh, of the case lines bundle. Morning. I've got that, thank you. Okay, and if I can take you please to paragraph 10. Um, it says, um, the first defendant contracted with the claimant for the products to be sourced from the claimant and supplied in accordance with the UN STD specifications through several purchase orders, which enclosed with the first defendant standard terms and conditions. It is admitted that the claimant was stated as the packer in quotation marks on the labels. However, there was an important distinction as to the use of the word packer. The claimant incorrectly labeled itself as the packer, having sourced the products from East Asia and repackaged the products at a facility in Ajman, UAE, and as having packed and exported the products. And that is responded to by the claimant at um, 222 um, with the red reference 1219. I'm not, I'm not sure I can see the red reference. Okay, it's, it's triple two on the PDF. Okay, so I've got zero one triple two. Oh, perfect, thank you. Um, and that should be the uh, response to defence and counterclaim. Um, and you should have in bold at the local purchase orders on that page. Zero one two one two or two two two. Two two two. Sorry, zero one two one nine, and yeah. it's the PDF reference is two two two. I understand. If I've done, if I've done my, my I'm math. on zero one two one nine. I can't see the bold reference that you're referring to, Mr. Fox. Yeah. If you on zero one zero one two one nine. Um. I, well, I've got the PDF version, which is zero one two two two. Two two two. It's zero one two one nine PDF two two two. Mm -hmm. And and the bold reference is what, uh, Mr. Fox? Could you just repeat the? The local purchase orders is local there's two orders. there's two headings A is background and B is local purchase orders on that page. That's strange. I don't have that in front of me. Um, I'm just going. Okay, it's a different document for me. It's zero one two one nine. Okay, that's really really strange. Okay, I have it. Okay, uh, and if I could take you to paragraph five, 
um, which the, whereby the, the the claimant says the defendants claim under paragraph 10, which is the paragraph I just took you to, that the claimant incorrectly labeled itself as the packer is vehemently opposed and denied as the same is against the facts and truth. And to avoid you having, I have the list of issues in front of me. The issue that we have highlighted is whether the claimant was the packer of the products. Um, so in circumstances where we, we have made a contention that they were not and they have vehemently denied it, it it's our position that, that it, is a, it is an issue between the parties. Would you like right. me to take you um, to the next issue, or would you like to, would you like to wait for the claimant to um, comment on it? I'm interested in uh, Mr. Dinesh's comments on this because yeah. I don't see why. Obviously, it can't be included. Um, it's been cross referenced yes. several times um, in the pleadings. Yes. Um, so perhaps you can assist the court with that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, it's the word packer doesn't have any uh, special meaning here because the entire contract, the delivery took place over a period of four months. And there are a series of consignments. And this was delivered at the, uh, at the port of destination. Then if they had any issue with the word packer, a packer means packing somebody, some pack and packer. And if they have an issue, they would have informed us, look, you are a packer. There's nothing of that sort. Because if you are framing an issue, it should be something somewhat related to the terms of the contract and see that if there is any breach of the contract, we can't introduce something quite foreign to the contract and say that, of course, the, the claimant may say something and defendant disputes and that can be an issue. An issue should be something which is leading us to see that if there is a breach of contract between the parties. So I really you know, wonder how this word uh, describing uh, the claimant as a packer is going to lead to uh, find out who who breached the contract and what is its relevance here and just because there is a dispute of course if somebody is introducing something definitely there will be a rebuttal on that point if it is not that relevant so that is the quite natural in pleadings but that does that can't be an issue and other, that means we are taking the entire issue and contract to a different level which is not as for the contract or terms of the purchase order. We have to look at the contract and see whether it is emanates out of the contract or not. And I have the comment, I, I, uh, if uh, Mr. Fox is coming to the second, that is I, serial number 10, I have a comment on that. I can straight away take the quote to that comment. I'm just coming to the issues. Yes. Kindly see uh, the disputed issues here, page 289, which we 83, that is uh, 03 3. Uh, the disputed issue is 8. Look at 8 for a moment. Whether uh, I hope that we are on the same page. 83, 283, page 283. Uh, just bear with me, please. I'm trying to find it. 03-3, yes. So yes. we're back on the de defendant's list of issues? Yes, list of issues. There are two okay. issues which have been cited. That is issue number five and issue number 10. So I'm mean, coming back to issue, issue number, number eight. Eight. Yes. eight. Kindly look at the issue. Whether rejected products needed to be returned to the claimant, given that they were specifically marked for UN consumption only and not for commercial use in accordance with the UN STD specifications, UN procurement rules. So here there is a question raised whether the rejected products needed to be returned. So that is a question raised by the defendant. And kindly come to uh, issue number 10 of the same document, 03-4. Whether the first defendant provided the claimant with the opportunity to recover the non-compliant products. So this area comes into the question of mitigating the damages, whether the claimant did something to mitigate the damage and whether the defendant aided the claimant in case the delivery is not accepted by the final consumer or customer, then it has to be returned so that I can mitigate my damage. 
So the, whether defendant has aided me to mitigate this damage, defendant says that has to be looked into. According to them, they did. But at the same time, para eight is contrary to their claim at all. Claim straight away. They say it can't be returned. So first they say it can't be returned straight away. And at issue number 10, they say, look, we help them to return. So these two issues won't stand together. The question is, we try to mitigate the damage. We don't want to have an unnecessary burden on the defendant. So we tried our best to mitigate the damage. They did not return the goods. We suffered. And, and this rejection is not based on the quality of the product. The rejection is based on, according to the defendant, we did not give the product as per the specifications. And so if it is not, it, is, it doesn't mean that it is not consumable. It was a consumable good, perishable good, but properly kept. So if they could have returned, if they had returned it, I would not have suffered this much damage. So I, my respectful submission here is that the issue won't go together. So far as issue number eight and 10 by own admission of the defendant. And so far as issue number five is concerned, that is pouring to the contract. Mr. Fox, was there anything, I mean, yes, I, I, I hear what you've said in that it's been included in the pleadings, but are we making an issue about something that doesn't need to be an issue, um, which is just going to add further time to the process and um, uh, to the... It, on our case, no, I think it's it's relevant that whether or, whether or not they were the packer is relevant as to whether they had knowledge and had... Um, prepared the goods themselves or simply repacked them. Um, to, to, to our mind, it's a, it's a relatively important issue in the case. Um, we say they just simply repacked them and forwarded them on. Um, and then we received them and ultimately came to the conclusion that they were non-compliant. They were rejected by a customer for non-compliance. We went through a process of testing them and confirming that they were non-compliant. So from our perspective, it, it is we have agreed where we can. Um, these two issues are just um, two issues that we can't we can't agree to their position on. Yeah, um, definitely on that basis. Happy to include issue five. Um, what are your comments, Mr. Fox, with regards to the contradiction between eight and ten? Which, to, to be fair, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Dinesh, I'm not quite following. Yes, yes. Um, maybe yeah. Mr. Fox can assist me a little bit further. Um, but Mr. Fox, perhaps you can give me your comments and that might make a little bit more sense before we can figure yeah, out whether that ought to be included or not. Certainly. Um, you will, they are, they are obviously pleaded issues in that they have been pleaded in the case and both sides do not agree on them. I'm happy to take you to the references but in circumstances where the bundle is the bundle is, that we that we're working with I, i'm also happy not to if you would rather that i don't um i don't see that there's as mr dinesh has said um this is a issue that goes to their mitigation argument they he described it as a key issue um whether or not we had an obligation to return the goods to them um that they m make much of. They say that we should have done, and then and then the losses would have been would have been less. Um, so, to our mind, these issues are these issues are key issues, and they're fact and effectively they're they're relatively factual issues. So, whether the first defendant provided the claim with an opportunity to recover the non-compliant products, it's a matter of fact. Um, whether they needed to be returned. Um, is also, it's, it's a matter of legal analysis, but to my mind, they are not inconsistent. So whether they needed to to be returned or not is different to whether they whether we provided them an opportunity to do so. Because we, we might not need to, but we could still have given them an opportunity. I, it's fine. I don't want to have an unnecessary dispute on this issue. Uh, it may not be recorded as my concession, uh, but I'm confident that we can prove that part. So even if it remains, it's not going to make much change as far as my case is concerned. Uh, Mr. Okay. Paul, 
Uh, thank you so much for that. But uh, of course, uh, I leave it to the court, and I don't, I don't want to unnecessarily dispute on something, which is. No. Okay, well, I, I guess that's settled, Mr. Dinesh. Um, if it's not going to, I mean, from the court's perspective, um, we would only remove issues that are directly relevant to the case, directly relevant to the claim. Um, but all other issues, for all intents and purposes, need to be uh, kind of contended um, in 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 the relevant forum, being a hearing um and evidence provided on each of these issues if that's what the parties want so um removing it again would probably detract from a fair trial um so i think we need to include it um and it's great if you can prove it and you can prove its redundancy then hats off to you that's fantastic but i think we do need to include it in the meantime so that issue stays as well thank you um is there any other and i I mean, that's probably the only other thing that you guys had to discuss, which is these two list of sorry, these two issues on the list of issues. But other than that, the orders seem to be fine, as you have mentioned, Mr. Fox. You've got no um, objection to the current form of the order, and unless the claimant retracts it for any reason, I'm just taking a look at it now, which and it's appearing at page zero four zero one on my PDF document. So we're hoping for a trial in May next year. Yes. Good. Now, the only th comment I've got is the paragraphs 17 and 18 of the order uh, in respect of the exchange of skeletons chronology and perhaps a reading list. I would ask that these are filed simultaneously exchanged four days before the trial Very because good. two days is not enough time to give the judge to read into the matter. So four days I think is, is prudent and then given that we've had issues with the e-bundle um i should hope that i mean i should hope that there's no issues no technological issues arising with respect to the uploading of documents onto the cms and any other platform before the hearing but in case there is for any reason which is completely out of our control and completely outside of the party's control we at least have some time to try and sort the issue out before the trial so if that can be amended please Yes. So four days. I know the draft order, and this is just a very silly technicality, but I know the draft order words things in the form of by no later than, um, but it really should be by this point because by and no later than essentially mean the same thing. So if that can just, if you can just amend that drafting just to delete no later than and keep the word by. Uh, that would be helpful. We're trying to go back to basic English at the court now to make things less complicated and more concise. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Good. A um, lot of unnecessary jargon we use. It's not necessary. There is a lot of unnecessary jargon and it just complicates yeah. things and we're creating more issues as a result. Um, and my pet hate is to go back and uh, rectify and clarify orders that have been issued, which are only meant to serve as clarification aids for the parties. Um, is there anything else? Uh, costs are typically costs in the case, obviously, but any other submissions you wish to make? Um, obviously, a pre-trial review is not always necessary, but we do encourage it where the parties have time to attend it and give us an update on how things are progressing. Uh, but I think hopefully this should be a straightforward case. I look forward to seeing it go to trial in May. Unless you've got any further issues to discuss, um, I'd hope to receive the draft order by, say, does 1 p.m. suit the parties? The updated draft order? From the defendant's side, that's not a problem. Perfect. Thank you very much. Of Mr. course. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a... 
and, and no, out, no, no outstanding issues to discuss. That's it. Oh, thank you so much, Rajesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you Fox. very much, thank and you, uh, thank you, and uh, Mr. Emma Walker, uh, Miss Emma Walker, and Mr. James Fox. Um, thank you so much for your cooperation. This is my first hearing before the FC courts. So, <laughs> thank you, Miss Walker. I, I hope to see you registered as well, Miss Walker. Thank you, thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.